All right. So guys, appreciate you um, using the day effectively yesterday. I was under the weather. I did have some kosher hot dogs. Uh, I don't recommend it to anybody, um, especially if they're leftovers, right? Of course, uh, practice safe food safety, right? Something like that. Anyway, let's um, continue where we left off last time. All right, I still have it labeled as part one. In fact, I even started drawing it yesterday um, just to show you just how much easier it is to draw two-dimensionally or analog um, in the digital realm, right? So one of the things I was telling us uh, last time, you know, we were going over sort of the elevation uh, that we can create our grids, that we can, you know, change all those layers and things like that. Uh, we can easily separate them, all sorts of things, right? Um, so the reason that is, is as you guys know, eventually I'll need to separate my elevation or section and I'll need my, my floor plan, right? So uh, just to kind of continue off um, maybe where I was going with this, um, I'm going to need that floor plan, so let's let's go ahead and get that floor plan. I can make a copy. Enter. And move it over to a new area. Like I said, these are kind of like my desks. So I'm going to make a copy, just to keep myself organized. I'm going to act like uh, I'm setting it up just like I would um, on my table. right? So one of the things that we addressed last time when we did two point perspectives was the angle itself. So um, now that we're doing digital, now maybe this maybe is the time to you know switch some things up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do something a little bit more dramatic where the one point, or I should say the left point is gonna be dramatically over here, whereas the right point's gonna be a little closer on my horizon line, uh, basically because of um, that rotation. So next thing I'm going to need is my elevation information. So I'm going to actually copy a new one right over here. Let's take that one, go ahead and copy it. And again, it's just like the setup of, uh, you know, what it was in analog. Uh, what's nice about this is I can further make some copies, right? Say I wanted to get some more information. I want to take my other section and put it over here. Could do that, right? Um, I don't know, the world's your oyster at that point. A couple of things that we need. Of course, a line to represent our picture plane. Now, I'm not going to necessarily label them. However, I could, right? I could use text and I could label things. I'm going to get it pretty dang close, right? We know that uh, we can actually get it close or at least align it. I can use my near if I wanted to and make sure that it was at least touching that line, right? Or intersection. Looks like intersection is going to do it. Let's see what that does. Yeah. That way I know my picture plane is there. What else do I need, guys? Ground line. So, of course, I'm just going to copy the same line because why work harder when I can work smarter? There's my ground line. And lastly, I need a horizon line. So, it can really be honestly any of these lines. Um, but we do know that the vanishing points are going to go to that horizon line. So keep in mind, um, and just a quick question for the class, what would happen if I put the horizon line above my object? Be down on it yeah, I'm going to be looking down on it, and damn, it's going to look dramatic as heck, right? And in fact, all the lines will be going sort of up, if you will. I don't recommend that unless you just are kind of like, you know what, I want to challenge this time, right? Um, and you're more than welcome to it. Um, I really recommend probably going somewhere in the middle. It's kind of a safe bet. Um, you'll see that in my last one, I, I chose the golden ratio proportion of my 40 feet. Um, so that's another way to do it too. However, there's not really a wrong answer. So that's kind of nice. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick one and we'll call that one my horizon line. Oh, there we go. Looks like I accidentally made a copy. I'm accidentally using the wrong keyboard. There we go hide that one for a second. There we go. So we got a picture plane, horizon line, and our ground line. Next thing we need is a stationary point. So I forgot to tell you that, you know, we can make curves, we can make lines, we can make all sorts of things, but we can also type in point. And the reason why point is a kind of a special object in Rhino is that it never prints, right? Or if it does print, it's like the world's smallest microscopic dot and nobody can ever really see it anyway, right? Um, and you bet I'm going to use it for my stationary point. 
So I'm going to go with my stationary point. We can line it up with this guy quite nicely. I'm going to I'm going to get some good distance uh, from my object. I don't want it to be too um, dramatic. Honestly, I could probably go even farther than that. Let's go with something like that. A, a pretty good distance uh, at looking at that 40 foot object. So that is my stationary point. I could text, right? And I could, I can even label all these things. It wouldn't be a bad idea, right? I can call my PP for perspective plane. I can start putting some of that information. Uh, looks like it got really, really small. That's okay. There we go. Still pretty small. There we go. Just to kind of label some stuff. Um, again, it's one of those things that you could even keep and use them as construction lines. Maybe not sort of the PP, but you, you get what I'm saying. Obviously, you're going to want to keep some of these lines um, because you already drew them. They are, in fact, the construction lines that made this drawing. So, dang, you can see it's so much better on this projector. Do you guys notice that? Yeah. It is like night and day. Man, anyway, uh, I'm really glad to see it. It's been a long time since we've gotten something for this room. Um, continuing on, so we'll want this to be, of course, a straight line all the way down. And we know that it happens to also be the only line that is correct, right? So instead of redrawing all those lines, I can use extend. And I can go and go ahead and get all those construction lines. And I can do them all at once too. Oh. Extend. Maybe not. Oh, apparently I have multiple copies. That's okay. Quite a few copies. What's the best way out of this, guys? If I need one copy, what do I do? Make 2D. Hit enter. Oh, I'm still stuck on the extend, my bad. So when I, went, when I need one copy and I know that there's tons and tons of lines on itself, I can go ahead and make a 2D copy and I can move it back to my original location. It's got kind of a nice way around it. Hopefully you guys saw that. Of course I have it recorded, so yeah, there is no question. But sometimes I do have to fix some things, not the end of the world. Get rid of these sidelines as well. Because, like I said, I want to extend these lines. So I have to choose the point that I want to extend them and then basically just select the other lines. Again, saving me some time not having to do that over and over again. Um, the next thing I can do is well, maybe that's really distracting. Maybe I just need the point system from it. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a point. And go ahead and hit spacebar and click, click, spacebar, click. If I didn't want to do that over and over again, of course I could copy it. And again, these are kind of like those tick marks that we would normally do analog. Of course, I have too many. Again, not the end of the world. And I can even sort of hide my construction lines if they started to get in the way. Looks like these are now make 2D lines though. So let's change that. And let's turn them into my construction lines. Awesome. That way I can just have my points. Although it looks like I may have gotten some of the lines I don't need to be construction. Let's change those back to stairs, even though they should be their own layer. Nice. So we have this information. We have our stationary point. The next thing we need is our cone of vision, right? So this is where I was trying to explain to you guys, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfectly parallel to this side, right? Um, if I did want to extend it, I could. I really could. All it's gonna change is that vanishing point. However, by default, you know, I'm gonna get it pretty close and a little bit outside. Like I said, if we follow that rule and keep it parallel, 
we're gonna notice that this vanishing point goes way farther out. That's kind of what we want, right? So that it's a little, a different kind of dramatic. That's about right. And of course, what we need is just the intersection. So we can either trim it or just use that intersection. So of course, I'll make sure that my intersection is clicked. Finds it right away, hold shift so I know it's straight. And as you can see, this is already much easier, <laughs> of course, digitally. Um, I can lock onto it, no question. And again, it saves me some time. Uh, let's see, next, okay, so we have our vanishing points. I'm gonna go ahead and make a point for those, just so I know. And I could even start just connecting things, right? Just because I know some of the rules now. I know that essentially all of those are gonna, of course, go to that point. You could even take it a step further and really get all of them. I can get the entire grid. But why work harder when I can work smarter? Another thing to be said, well, sir, what if I need to accidentally change my vanishing point? I can select everything, right, except for the vertical pieces that I don't need. I can move it. Obviously, I wouldn't want my horizon line. Move. But I can actually move a point too. Oh. Nice, the sound comes through there too. Not sure why it won't move though. Let's find out. Ah, I know why. There we go. We gotta actually get the point. But what's really nice is I can do that now. Do you guys see that? I can move the point of two lines that are intersected. So maybe I accidentally, I went too far on that vanishing point. I could choose that one, I could choose that one, I could choose that one, I could choose that one. What's nice is, again, I don't have to make several drawings just because I accidentally messed up. I can actually fix stuff now, uh, which is, of course, nice to have. However, if we continue, right, it's just like the exact same process. So I could take my back point. In my case, it's not really a corner, and that's going to affect it a little bit, but that's okay. We'll take that intersection and take it all the way down. I'll get that e that next point, and I can kind of go fast now because you know I know that you guys at least understand the exercise, and just like that, right? Of course, we got our last one. That one. And again, that O snap is ever so helpful. However, you should always take off near because you'll accidentally click something else if you have near on, unfortunately. But yeah, now we have our box. I can trim some things off that I don't need. I could maybe even turn them into a construction line layer. So for instance, let's say I did want to keep all that, uh, but I do want to sort of, as I go, turn it into construction lines. I can, right? I can right click, change object layer, and they're going to disappear because I have that layer off right now, right? I can even lock that layer. That way I don't accidentally change anything. And I can continue on. All right, so there's my next piece, my next piece, and so on. Can even go back and forth, kind of divide and conquer. You guys see what I'm doing there? Unfortunately, I haven't come up with an easy way to do this. It's just kind of one of those things where you got to connect the dots. It helps. Um, I don't think I've gone over this except maybe with a select few students. If you hit spacebar, um, the command is initiated again. All right, so I may look like magic, but I'm just hitting spacebar and clicking. All right. But again, we can get our entire grid system, right? Let's see if I can fake it a little bit. I know what to do. I'm going to mirror this real quick. 
Well, I guess not fake it. Actually, it will be correct. And it might save us some time. I don't know why it's not getting those other lines. Let's manually get them, I guess. Oh, maybe they're just not showing up? I am screen sharing, so it is a thing. Anyway, oh, there they are. Okay. Ugh, weird. Anyway, let's make that actually work. So instead of actually highlighting the lines, I want to highlight the point. So how do I do that without getting all the lines? Well, I can go this way, right? Um, well, actually, I'll have to go this way, but then uh, unselect that ground line, or sorry, horizon line. If I move it, then I can move it by that intersection point. Ah, oh, it won't let me get the point. Do I need to put a point there? That might be it. Dang, look at that. We can zoom in and zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. Oh, there's the problem. They're not on the same point. However, it did look like it, right? And they're wildly off. This is also the dangers of using near, right? You guys know what I mean by near? This little guy. Very dangerous, right? Because then often this will happen. So it doesn't look like I can do the, the kind of little trick that I wanted to do, but that's okay. We can do it manually. But clearly you can start to see I'm getting my two point perspective, right? And especially since you already have these done, everything's already there, right? It just needs to be transferred over um, and basically go through that exercise. Okay? So we'll basically leave it uh, at least a two point there for now. Let's go over the one point and what the modelers will do, right? Because uh, that is definitely wildly different. Um, so the one point perspective, let's get another copy of my plan. Now I don't really have a space in here, but that's okay. Let me go ahead and make a copy. And of course I'll need my elevation information as well. Or I could just take this copy, never used it. However, that was the bad copy. So maybe we do use this one. And again, just kind of the exact same things. Setting up our one point perspective. Maybe get a nice angle in there, why not? Holding shift to make sure it's definitely a straight line. Nice. Picture plane. Look at that, it's even trying to help us out. Ground line, and of course a horizon line. And to our case, this actually might be a little easier. Because what we could do is establish, um, we already have our center point, right, essentially. But in my case, I don't really have a space here, so I might actually have to do something like that. That way my picture plane is actually inside of a space and I'm getting some of that information. Need a stationary point. Not quite on the line. Let's move that. Nice. Of course, we needed our diagonals. They're no longer called vanishing points, but we do need them to establish our diagonal. Oh, I want to make sure we get an intersection. And really, we only need one of them, but. Uh, 
as you can imagine, we can really start to get our one point. And even if we think about it, it's kind of a radial pattern. It's kind of this, this box mode, if you will. Lock on to our near. And we can start to get that, that idea. Right. I'll trim some out just to kind of get an idea of what we're looking at. Yeah. And our one point becomes more right there. Right, you might find, especially with the one uh, the one point, that you have to stop it somewhere. Otherwise, it's just going to go on and on, and it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, if you have to, refer back to that stair assignment that we did. Right, absolutely. So I'll leave it there right now, just for timing's sake. Uh, we got about an hour left, and I do want to give time for questions. So the next thing, um, and it may seem simpler this one, right? But of course, you have to model everything that you of course want to be in that final two-point perspective uh, plus I want to go over some of the things of uh, context that we can use so just like we made this one however let's be a little bit more calculated let's actually um, let's be more true about it so I'm just gonna use that as my model let's say this was my completed thing uh, yes it's very much incomplete but let's go ahead and imagine that it is complete and let's go put it off into the distance somewhere else. There we go. Somewhere over there. We can click on that view and zoom right to it. Awesome. Now, what we're looking at right now is essentially a camera. Like, we are that person's view. So, what we can do is type in camera, enter, and I can have it show that camera. So if you look at my top view now, it's even showing me sort of that cone. What's nice is it's almost even real time of what I'm looking at. Does that make sense, guys? If I'm getting closer to it, is my cone smaller or bigger? No, my cone is smaller. Look at that cone. Get, as I move towards it. However, if I zoom out, of course that cone gets bigger, right? Because there's more space that I can see, of course effectively making the object smaller, right? So the digital realm of, is obviously, what do you think they mimicked? The real world, right? I mean, it wouldn't make any sense to mimic something else. So of course they use the exact same qualities that we have in a camera. So what's nice about that is when I control this stationary point, and I can see it actually in all the other views, I can control how high I am above the object. So I can control that maybe, look, I have a worm's eye view. or I can choose my horizon line to be fairly close up there or I can choose to look above the object. I'm going to go with something a little more regular. Right? I'm also going to get significantly closer to the object. Something like that. But what's nice is I can really control and dial all these things in. Right? I can really mess with it. Next thing I could do is I can make it like a wide angle lens. Some of you guys are definitely familiar with this, right? Notice how dramatic it looks now. Does that look familiar to anybody? Right, super stuff. And that's, that's essentially what you accidentally did. Maybe, maybe your cone was a little bit too big. Maybe you were a little too close to that object. So what's really nice is you get to test that in seconds, right? So, I mean, there are a lot of benefits to modeling it. However, absolutely not required. But basically all we're doing is controlling that stationary point. Right? Of course, I've got a little dramatic. If I zoom into this object, as you can see, it's quite dramatic, to say the least. And of course, it's because of that cone. So I should probably dial my cone back just a little bit. And probably step away from the object. Like I said, I do want some distance. However, once I lock those things, what's nice is I can right click and I can really dial it in. So let's say that was it. That was perfect, that's what I wanted. 
I need to be able to save it, right? I don't want to have to find that exact position again. In fact, it's quite impossible. Uh, I've tried. Anyway, we'll right click on the perspective plane, right? So our viewport. We'll go to set camera, right? And, or sorry, set view and show named views panel. Shows a little camera, especially on the Mac. So this is kind of specifically for the Mac version. Um, however, it is pretty similar on the Windows, except it just doesn't have the same toolbar, but it's, a, it's the same icon. We'll hit the plus sign and we'll call it um, two point perspective. You know, just so we can find it. Enter. And even if I accidentally mess this up, if I double click on this, it goes right to it, right? Like magic. Uh, maybe I find a different view that I want to use, right? And I could right click or I could plus sign it again, right? Number two. Wow, can you imagine the potential? Obviously, once you have um, a stationary model that has all of its fixings, the world is your oyster in terms of creating perspectives, right? Um, but again, it doesn't stop here. So we need some information. I did mention that you might want some shade and shadow information. So for the assignment, I have it right now as there needs to be shade and shadow on either the floor plans or the elevations. Um, but I will allow, you can put shade and shadow on all of these things, right? Especially after what I'm about to teach you right now. So what we can do is put it in rendered mode, right? And we can get an idea of its shade and shadow. Right, we learned last time that we can actually create a spotlight. Can hover it over this guy, control the cone, and and get some pretty wild stuff. Right, control our stationary point for that. But as you can see, I really have a lot of control in the digital realm. Right, so I'm no longer actually changing the view. I'm just changing the spotlight. Right, so that's kind of cool. I might want to keep that and obviously incorporate that into the information that I have, right? Um, it's looking pretty good, right? I want to double, double click on my, uh, my viewport just because I don't know if, you know, I might accidentally move it, right? In case I do, you know, I want to make sure that I get this exact view and I'll show you why. We're going to highlight everything. We're going to make 2D, enter. We're going to keep our hidden lines because as you know, I like to see those hidden lines and what's nice is it's going to even put it in a different layer for us. I'm going to hit apply. As long as I'm in the right viewport, it's going to create the right view for me. Looks like I accidentally put this in two point perspective. That's okay. I can go back to set view and go back to looking at the top, right? Looks like it came in just fine. So I'm going to move it to a nice spot. I'll put it over there. Maybe just to double check it. It definitely looks like the right view. Um, I don't really see anything missing. This is where I could start to even draw some more stuff, right? So maybe I didn't get to modeling some of those things. Oh, maybe I forgot a handrail or two. I could still come in and, and draw necessary things. Right, say, me, say I was missing a handrail. Maybe I was missing a scale figure of something, right? I could start to even like have a scale figure. And even this would be honestly better than nothing, right? Not not the worst scale figure, not the best scale figure. I can even start to trim them out. That way he actually looks like he's there. Not too bad, right? Um, however, I did mention I want that shade and shadow information, right? So if I modeled it, there should be no question. Right, you should need your shade and shadow information, right? especially if you modeled it. Um, however, let's go back to my view. And I need to get this shade and shadow. However, unfortunately, there's not like a make 2D for the shadow itself. I mean, I know, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Um, I've looked into it and there's, it, it's, um, it's a ray trace. Um, you may not understand what that is, but essentially it's, it's being calculated as we speak and doing all the refraction and everything. So. The best thing that we can do is either take a screenshot. So on the Mac, you can choose uh, Command, Shift, and the number four, and you can screenshot it. Right? If you didn't know that, you're welcome.
right? Especially for those of you who have a MacBook. Bam, got a sec, uh, got a screenshot, right? So I can either use that and I can trace my shade and shadow. How easy is that? I can make a, like a shade and shadow layer, lock everything else and quite literally trace that shadow. Another thing that I can do is slip this image underneath in um, in Illustrator and have it sort of fade out, right? Maybe I Photoshop it a little, but again, we're getting towards the edge of computer graphics. And again, we're 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 graphics too. We we want to stick to the standards of architectural graphics. So what I would say the best route to go is simply trace it. It's not a hard trace, and you can easily fill it in with hatch. So uh, let's get out of my rendered view. We'll put that back into there. And essentially what I'll do in the top view is align those two views. So I'll take in picture, type in picture, enter. Go ahead and get my screenshot that I just made. And do my very absolute best to line them up. Guess what happens if I don't accidentally click on this, guys? What would happen if I accidentally have a view that's slightly not correct? It's never going to line up. And don't be that person who sits here for an hour thinking that the image and the lines are perfect when they accidentally are two different views. Does that make sense? Because it'll never line up, right? And I've, I've seen students go through this, this frustrated battle of themselves where they accidentally click somewhere, they accidentally move their make 2D lines, or they accidentally move that render screenshot, and they, they go, Professor, why won't they line up? Very often it's because they're not actually the exact same view. So let's find out and make sure that I did it correctly. However, it does look pretty dang close. In my case, what I like to do is align one corner that I know is true, right? So, you know, kind of the outside fuzziness of that, you can kind of see it and hope for the best. So let's scale this guy up. Of course, hold shift to make it proportional, right? And get it as close as possible. Right, it looks like I made it a little big, but it should line up everywhere, right? See the stairs starting to line up? Oh, so close. So yeah, a couple of trial and error. Again, holding shift to make sure that it is proportional. It's a very dangerous operation. Oh, look at that, damn, so close. Slightly bigger, slightly bigger. We can zoom in to make kind of micro adjustments. I'm gonna move that ever so slightly. Fake it till you make it, right? However, as you can see, it's pretty darn close, right? We see all those elements in there. And this is what I meant. We can lock this entire element. So I can select everything and lock it. Right? I can go back to my layers panel and create, you know, shade and shadow, right? I can even, you know, have two different layers, shade and shadow. So cool that you can hear it now. That was not a thing. But again, use our polyline tool. What's nice is we do have the drawing there, but man, look how much easier that is, guys. Right? I don't have to sit there and calculate for days. That and now there's this kind of soft component to it that I can come back and sort of hard line, give it an edge. I don't necessarily have to take this edge. Um, of course, the only reason I'm actually tracing it is so that I can hatch it and honestly get rid of the outline. Right. But what do you think? Easier? Yes. Can you imagine calculating all that? Of course, I'd probably want to get that a little better traced, but looks like a candy cane going on. Almost done guys, sorry, this is kind of the longer of the tutorials. We're going over shade and shadow, we're going over calculating two points, one points, and everything in between. And so I want to hit my object again. In my case, I do want to close this, so I'm going to kind of trace the element again, and enter. That way I know it's a closed box, I can hatch it. 
I can make it solid, I can make it a regular hatch. Some of you guys were struggling with this uh, last time. You can change the scale and the rotation here. Sometimes it changes, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on the hatch that you're using. Some hatches, um, honestly, are different than others. Um, you can load your own hatches, which is kind of nice. And, of course, you can change the scale. Right? So if you can't see those lines sometimes, like mine are very, very, they're so close together, they look thick. So, of course, changing that scale. Usually you can double click. Oh, it's already inactivated. So let's change that to 100. See if that gives us some better results. Uh, better. Let's try that one. Mm, still not so great. I wonder if they have any vertical lines. They don't have any vertical lines. Oh well. Let's try a thousand scale. Usually you don't have to go that. There we go. Finally getting some straight lines. Now they're too big. <laughs> so let's dial it back. Maybe 750. There we go. How easy is that, guys? And then, of course, I can I can even get rid of that curve. Voila. Fair enough. Right? Of course, I'd want to do all the shade and shadow. Right? So I can get this. However, that is entirely easy. Right? Now I can unlock, of course, my pieces. I can take all those pieces into account. And when I hatch... Some of you guys, um, you know, there is an option to hatch by boundary, right? So that you can basically use it as a fill bucket. Um, you can also move your image to just kind of check. Man, look at that. And nobody would ever know you traced it. They're like, man, how'd you calculate that? Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> so I'm going to hatch it again. Uh, I'm not sure why it's telling me I can't hatch. Uh, why is it doing that? Oh, it might be because it's a grouped object, so I'm going to explode it real quick. After all, we didn't make that make 2D, so technically it's its, it's, its own layer. So let's try that again. Hatch it. No, still won't let me hatch. Oh, it's all grouped. So let's ungroup it. And the way I knew, guys, is I clicked on one line, and it selected all the stairs. I know that it's grouped, right? So kind of uh, trial by error. Uh, took a while to figure that out, honestly. Let's try that again. Hatch. It's still stopping me. What is up with that? For the most part, it looks pretty exploded. Let's change this to my shadow. Don't want to accidentally get that confused. Sorry, wrong one. There we go. That way I can even hide stuff so I don't accidentally mess it up. It really does not want me to hatch this. Let's try just this portion. There we go. So yeah, we there's this option when you click boundary, guys. It's really nice. Because um, now we can just kind of fill this in. Right, so maybe I wanted something that was... Um, you know, I wanted all these to be sort of their own shade. I can fairly easily, right? But again, hopefully you saw how I did that. I had to separate, um, I had to explode the lines, right? Treat them as separate boundaries. After all, the computer, it is smart, but it's not that smart, right? It, it doesn't really know or understand what we're drawing as much as we do, which is why I'm not really scared of AI, right? <laughs> Have you ever seen them like, draw me a house? Right, it's all, it looks great, but when you really analyze it, you're like, it just put the kitchen next to the bathroom. What the <laughs> hell is that about, right? So again, trust me guys, we're gonna have a job. Um, but what's great is we're probably gonna get to use all the tools really nice and effectively. Look at that. In minutes, right? So, um, I'll leave it there for now. Actually, hold up. I still wanted to show you one of the best websites that has free stuff. So like I said, I do want to see context. So this means scale figures and trees. I'll limit it to that, right? Don't throw some cars in there unless you really know what you're doing. But um, there are some free cars. So if we go over to, and you might want to write this one down. It's so hard to remember. Pimp my drawings. I should be sponsored for this guy. He's probably another architect student. Um, help this guy out. 
However, um, he does have a lot of free stuff. So he's got people. Yeah, you better believe it. He's got John Lennon. He's got George Harrison. He's got, you know, all of them. He's got Bruce Lee. Right? Every scale figure. So there is absolutely no excuse that your drawings from here on out should ever not have a scale figure. Right? Uh, you got him running. You got a child. You got this lady walking. You got whatever that guy's doing. Um, but what's even more nice is we have it in DWG, which opens up really nice in Rhino. And we have it in AI, which is Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, right? So we can, we kind of have some options here. Um, I really recommend doing what? Drawing in Illustrator or drawing in Rhino? Rhino. Do your drawing in Rhino, right? Um, I will say that because it's a lot easier to fix that drawing or manipulate that drawing or, because um, let's face it, watch what scale it comes in. So let's take this guy. He's on his phone. That's probably smart. We'll put it on the desktop so we can find that real quick. Let's get some trees in there. We got some free trees. That one looks pretty good. Take it again, DWG, save it on my desktop. He put some funny names on these too. <laughs> of course, these are all the free ones. Um, however, you know, for $5, you can get so many trees. Um, help a guy out, right? You know, he's also an architect student, so I thought it was actually quite genius that there's actually architect student out there like, how can I make some money with what I'm doing right now? He just drew and traced some trees, guys. You can do this too, and I see it all the time on Etsy, people selling digital stuff, and they don't have to do anything. That's passive income. That's something to write down, right? If you make money in your sleep, you're actually making money. If you don't make money while you sleep, you're never gonna make any money, right? <laughs> and of course, Robert knows what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Like right now, I'm making money off Etsy. I don't have to do anything, right? Of course, it leaves me some time to actually work with you guys, right? And of course, get paid too. I'm, I'm doubling my money, right? Anyway, we want to take those in. So naturally, we can either type in import or you can quite literally just drag them on here, which is kind of nice, at least in Rhino 7. Um, however, let's do it the manual way just in case, you know, that's confusing. File import and of course those DWGs. I'm gonna go ahead and do all three at a time. Uh, how, never mind, it won't let me. It just wants one at a time, that's okay. Pretty much not gonna do anything to this, um, otherwise I could really mess up something. So I'm just gonna take it in how it is. And you see what I mean, right? Obviously that is a very small tree. We don't want small trees here. So very easily scaled in Rhino. I mean, look how easy that was. I just used gumball and bam. Maybe, maybe I want a tree sort of covering us and maybe a tree behind us. All right, so I'll put one in front of us. Let's make it a big tree. What does Bob Ross say? He always puts that gigantic tree in the foreground. You guys don't watch Bob Ross, do you? You lied to me. Anyway, put that tree in the foreground. That's starting to look pretty cool. And let's get another one. Like I said, we need some people. Oh, accidentally typed in export, just waiting for it. Import. Uh, man walking. Look at that guy. Does that look correct? Of course not. So of course it's a perspective and I can't really scale anything, right? You know, it is it is what it is in terms of perspective. Oh, looks like I'm accidentally grabbing something else. Let's try that again. Gotta love edit undo, right? Probably shouldn't use this guy. He's, he's kind of looking at the object weird. I, he's definitely elevational, you know what I mean? He's not very three-dimensional, but that's okay. Obviously maybe Maybe I hold off to some of these scale figures for my elevations, my sections. You know, put some, some context information on those. Um, however, I could put a guy in there. Um, let's see, the farther I go back, he looks really small. You guys see what I'm doing there? Right, he looks too big over here. He looks too small over there. However, I haven't changed his size. Has everything to, of course, do with that perspective. That looks about right, though. Right, and again, fake it till you make it. Pretty close. But again, let's say my drawing was done. I'm ready. I've, I've even got my paper size on it. Boom. All right? Ready to take this guy into Illustrator. So let's file. Export selected. Desktop. We'll call it test. 
two. I uh, exported it the wrong way. That's fine. Export selected. Do make sure that it is, of course, either an AI file or a DWG. Came Imperial. Export. Wait for it. And let's go over to Illustrator. Wherever that is. There it is. Too many programs to count. But again, that's uh, Pimp My Drawings. All right, a lot of information there. But of course, um, he isn't the only website either. Honestly, if you type in um, CAD stuff, right? Free CAD blocks, right? You're going to find tons of stuff, right? You're going to find yoga mats. You're going to find treadmills, anything that you could possibly think of that would ever go into architecture. So i got to tell you, the internet is one of those amazing things. So let's go ahead and open up uh, that file we just did. I named it part two or test two. Looks like I accidentally named it that. That's all right. I'm going to go with scale to fit artboard, at least for now. After all, it is a perspective, so I can't really, like I said, I can't have a scaled perspective. That's it's an oxymoron. However, thank goodness things are layered, right? Even the trees are layered, so I can think about those first. So let's go ahead and do some of that. Obviously, I don't want blue trees. And they're really, really, really thin. So let's go with something a little thicker. It's looking pretty good. Has a nice touch to it. Let's go with the outer layer. Select all. Of course, make that a little thicker, a little darker. That's looking pretty good. Gotta tell you, it looks mild difference on the projector. We've got our shadow in there. Get some shadow going. Oh, it treated it as a fill. Look at that. So again, this is kind of our outline. This is kind of our fill. If I switch those, obviously I don't want an outline. So I'll make that none. I'll click over on my fill and I'll make that something in our case it looks like it's actually vectorizing it not a huge deal maybe I give it some transparency it starts to look a little bit more like a shade and shadow situation however it's still putting an outline so that's weird when I clearly have no outline there hmm. however we can get rid of that Changing it white. Or expand it. Weird. It's like making these white lines. What is that? Do I have them do I have them opposite? What's kind of nice is, I mean, it's kind of working, but I can't get rid of my outline for some reason. It's really weird. It was just gone for a second. I thought I'd fix it, and it just came back randomly. I must have clicked something. Not a huge deal, though. Oh, it looks like I have multiple in there. Hold on. Nope. No. There it is. So it looks like I had two in there. Not sure how, but. Mm, although it won't let me change the stroke. Yeah, that's not correct. Let's go ahead and object expand it. Expand. Expand in Illustrator is like Explode in Rhino. 
No, we got that situation. Bam. Oh, there it goes. It'll have to do for now. Let's continue. What do we got there? All right, those are our main lines. So those are our made, our main make two D lines. Those should be, of course, one of the thickest lines. So point seventy seven is probably good. And let's get our other hidden lines. too bad. Stairs, it looks like <laughs> I took in some of that stuff. That's alright. Although it all put it on one layer, so I mean... I don't know. It's definitely something about it. I think I accidentally should switch those, shouldn't I? Those should actually be the light ones. And of course, those should be the dark ones. There we go. Not too bad, huh? I mean, for a cheesy little tutorial. Right? Unfinished model with... Man, even an unfinished model can look pretty good. Yeah. Know what to do? See the potential, hopefully? Yeah. yeah. Chris is like, no, I can't do it. Uh, but yeah, really looking for this level of drawing, right? Especially if you guys model it, modeled it, there should be no problem just sort of rendering it. And of course, um, you can either look up rendering. I would say just screenshot it. It's not, you know, that render that it produces is actually pretty good. Um, you don't necessarily have to get into rendering. We're going to get into rendering in computer graphics anyway. So I would say take a screenshot. Otherwise, um, any questions about this, guys? I think I covered just about everything. We got our 2D, 2D 2 point, 2D 1 point, and I think we'll leave it there. Sound good? Yeah. Question, Leah? Yeah, um, I know you're going to say, The two point? What about it? The units? It's in feet. Where does it say millimeter? Oh, right there. Yeah, so you can change your your millimeter C plane. Yeah, it's definitely in feet. Um, however, that's a really good notice. Um, I wonder if that controls anything. It's a good question. I actually don't know. I don't know why it says millimeters there. I mean, obviously it can either control the world or the seaplane, but uh, you know, my seaplane's almost non-existent now. I don't even know where it is. Somewhere over here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so maybe my seaplane is in millimeters? I mean, I could find out. I kind of want to know now too. Because that should be, let's see, length. Oh, yeah, it's still producing it in millimeters uh, in terms of my length. Good eye, good eye. Let's see why. Model, layouts. Oh, okay. So it did look like my model is actually in uh, millimeters, but I only changed my layout. Good catch, good catch. Uh, feet. Yes. Nice. So yeah, definitely looks a little bit more appropriate now. Now it's not going to change anything. It's just really going to change your seaplane. But you know, at least now it says the right thing down here too. Good eye, Leah. Good eye. What was that, Christian? Yeah, yeah. Because I was changing my layout. So if you look, you guys, take a look real quick when I hit units. Because um, this is a good point. Make sure that you're in the model. That way you can change it to feet, right? And I would use fractionals, you know. 
But that's just me. Some people like the decimal. I don't know. Anyway, I'll leave it there and stop the recording right about...